hello how are you uh we're just so glad that you've joined us today for this special story time i'm miss lisa from everett's library and i appreciate that miss elizabeth has invited me to come and uh, offer this little program for thanksgiving as we get ready you can tell i'm ready because i have my turkey mask and my fall earrings so i'm really in the mood for thanksgiving and i hope you and your family are too we're going to have a funny silly story today and then we're going to talk a little bit about the first thanksgiving and then i have a little craft activity that you can use to make some decorations for your house uh, hopefully miss elizabeth and i are talking about plans for the future and maybe it'll it won't be a very long time before we can see you in person at our libraries for our story time the way it was before so we'll get started today with the story called the very stuffed turkey and this is by katherine kena and the pictures are by benny talib He's gotten some mail and it says to Turkey at Turkey's house. And this one says to Turkey, you are invited to sheep and goats Thanksgiving feast. Oh, how exciting to get invited to some feast thrown by your friends. It was Thanksgiving morning and Turkey had a problem. Pig, horse, goat and sheep cow and mouse had each invited him to thanksgiving dinner at their homes turkey loved his barnyard friends and didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings he was going to everyone's house turkey wasn't sure he had room in his stomach for five dinners but then he thought of all the good food bubbling and baking in those kitchens just thinking about it made him hungry Five houses, five dinners, no problem. Oh my goodness, look at that page of food. You might see some of your favorites on there. I see strawberries and corn and pies. And he's just imagining all that. It was time to get ready. Turkey hopped up and down and touched his feet to the ground 25 times to stretch his stomach. He brushed his feathers then Turkey made a map of the way to his friends' houses. Turkey's friends, pig's house, horse's house, goat and sheep's house, cow's house, turkey's house to the left, a river, mouse's house. He was ready to go. Turkey walked to pig's house first. Pig was outside hanging up holiday lights. Some people are decorating early, you know what I mean? The piglets were playing pumpkin ball nearby. Hi, Turkey, said Pig. Hope you're hungry. One of the piglets made an amazing pumpkin pass that almost hit Turkey's head. Touchdown, called Turkey as he caught the ball and kicked it back to the piglets. Halftime, yelled Pig. He climbed down the ladder and waved everyone into the house for dinner. Pig made a fine Thanksgiving stew with beets and corn and a worm or two. While Pig's family snuffled and snorted, Turkey slurped and burped. He gobbled up everything on his plate. Turkey felt like part of the family. It was a wonderful feeling. Horse's house was next. Turkey wished he hadn't eaten like a pig when he saw the dining room table. It was covered with plates of oat cakes and hay, carrots, sugar cubes, and pumpkin and apple pies. While Horses family munched and crunched, Turkey mashed and mixed. He gobbled up everything on his plate. Look at that table, that spread of food. I have an idea, Horse said after dinner. Let's have a race. Turkey didn't think that was a good idea. He was too full to trot, and his tummy was feeling funny. While Horses' family raced ahead, Turkey hopped and fluttered behind them, but he didn't get too far. So Horse gave Turkey a ride under fall leaves as colorful as candy. Turkey felt like part of the family. 
It was a wonderful feeling. Goat and sheep lived next door to horse. Turkeys sniffed the air all the way to their house. What is that yummy smell? Turkey asked as he waddled through their front door. Come see, they said. Goat made his special Thanksgiving soup with flowers, weeds, and glue. Sheep baked a clover casserole dotted with dandelions. While goat and sheep tasted and sipped, Turkey gobbled up everything on his plate. That soup was sticky, said sheep. Dandelions taste fuzzy, said goat. Turkey said dinner was delightful, but he thought he might explode. They played hide and seek indoors after dinner. Goat and sheep kept peeking, but Turkey won every time. Turkey felt like part of the family. It was a wonderful feeling. Turkey was too late for dinner when he got to Cal's house. They were getting ready for dessert. Cal's family was crowded around the kitchen counter. They were all holding spoons and ice cream cones. There were cartons of ice cream everywhere and so many flavors, it looked like a rainbow. Ready, asked Cal. She handed Turkey a cone and spoon. For what, Turkey said. Our family's Thanksgiving ice cream cone contest, said Cal. The tallest cone wins. Ready, set, go. Man, he's got a tall one. Ice cream flew through the air. Everyone was shouting, pushing, and laughing. The kitchen was a mess. Look at that. Turkey felt like part of the family. It was a wonderful feeling. Turkey had one house left to go, mouses. When he got there, the table was crowded with mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, grandparents, cousins, uncles, and aunts. Happy Thanksgiving, Turkey, they shouted. Your Thanksgiving table might look like that. You may have a lot of extra people for that meal, but sometimes it's just your family, just who you live with. Dinner was a feast of bird seed, soap, and berries. While Mouse's family went nibble, nibble, taste, taste, Turkey gobbled up everything on his plate. Now comes the best part, said Mouse. What, asked Turkey. He hoped it wasn't ice cream. Our family's Thanksgiving parade, said Mouse. They put on their coats and boots, blew up balloons, and handed a drum to Turkey. Turkey was so full, he thought they could use him as a balloon. A gigantic floating turkey. When everyone was ready, the Mouse family parade marched out the door with Turkey at the front of their long, noisy line. Turkey felt like part of the family. It was a wonderful feeling. Neighbors poured out of their homes to join the parade. Turkey saw pig. He saw horse. He saw goat and sheep. He even saw cow. He saw every one of his barnyard friends. Turkey was so happy, so surprised, and so stuffed, he fell over. When Turkey opened his eyes, his barnyard friends were in a circle around him, looking at him with worried faces. How do you feel? asked Horse. I ate too much, said Turkey, but it was worth it. I got to spend Thanksgiving with all of you, and that's what families do. Sorry, Turkey, said Cal. We didn't know we each invited you to dinner. That's okay, said Turkey. But next year, we're having Thanksgiving dinner at my house. Everyone laughed and cheered. It was a wonderful feeling. The parade started again. While Turkey banged his drum, he planned what to make his barnyard family for dinner next year. Grilled grasshoppers were always good. Just thinking about it made him hungry. Happy Thanksgiving! Oh my goodness, he wanted to make everybody happy and enjoy Thanksgiving with every friend he had. But I think that was too many Thanksgiving dinners in one day. What do you think?
Another book I wanted to share with you, uh, and Miss Elizabeth and I and the library at Cumberland, uh, they all have these wonderful books that you can come and check out with your families. And the book I just read to you was fiction because, of course, it was full of silliness and all these animals visiting each other's homes. But we have some nonfiction books on Thanksgiving also. And this one is a nonfiction entitled The First Thanksgiving by Linda Hayward. And the uh, pictures in it are by James Watling. Now, I'm not going to read this whole book because this book is a little bit longer and uh, we don't have a lot of time today, but I did want to just go through and talk to you a little bit about the pictures and about the reason that we celebrate Thanksgiving. They start out talking about how the uh, pilgrims left England in 1620 and uh, they were uh, boarding the, the big ship and they were just average people is what they talk about in here. But now some of their names are in history books. So 400 years later, we're talking about these people that had no idea back then, just plain people looking for a new start in a new country. Uh, I told you they called them the pilgrims and uh, they were coming to a land. Uh, it's funny to think, but they had just heard of this land, America, where we live. But that, this is so many years ago. They had been warned about things that might happen to them if they came to this new country. Uh, even the trip across the ocean was dangerous and they had been warned about pirates and hurricanes, bad weather, and what would happen when they got to America. But they were risking their lives, and they asked this question here, why were they risking their lives? And so it goes back to tell us that while they were in England, there was a king who said that everybody had to be the same religion and had to worship like he wanted them to worship. But the pilgrims, they wanted to worship their own way. So they uh, decided that it was best that they leave England and find a new place where they could live and be free. So they were on the ship and the ship, you may have heard the name of this ship, it was called the Mayflower. Uh, Everybody was hoping that they would have a better life as they came to the new country. They had given up a whole lot. You know, if you think about you moved from this country to someplace new, they left their houses. They said goodbye to their friends that weren't coming. And uh, they set sail on their way. They got halfway across the sea and they hit some terrible storms. So they went through that for a while. And sometimes they were afraid that their ship, you can tell by those waves, that um, they were afraid the ship might not even make it through the terrible storms. But in the end, the Mayflower made it and they were at sea for nine weeks is what it tells us in this book. That's over two months. That's a long time to not be able to be on land and be on this ship. And they walked and walked for miles, and then they did see some of the Native Americans, but they were afraid of them too. So the Native Americans ran off when they saw them. So they, over a period of time, they decided that they would uh, choose a place there near the harbor where they could get fresh water and plant some things and find the perfect spot for them to live. So uh, they found that and it, they had a big rock there that marked where they land. So they called it New Plymouth because they had left Plymouth in England. So this was New Plymouth in America. That first winter was so hard. It was cold and long, and you know the winter. You get out there and the wind just whips through you. So they have freezing rain that would go on for hours, and they would huddle together around their fires because they didn't have furnaces and heaters and things like we have now. So they were really miserable that first year, and they felt like they were alone. A lot of people got sick, and many of the people didn't make it. They said that by the end of that first winter, only half 
of those pilgrims were still alive. Spring came and some Native Americans were sighted nearby their camp. So one day, this Native American came in, his name was Samoset, and they were scared at first, but then he smiled and he spoke in English and said, welcome. They were so surprised, but he had met some sea captains that had come on other ships that had taught him some English. So they became friends with him and uh, they gave him presents and they trusted him. Um, Samoset came back and he brought a friend and we'll talk a little more about him in a few minutes but his name was Squanto and he has a, an amazing story. He knew English better than Samoset and so um, we'll you know show you a book about him later but he decided to even live with the pilgrims so that he could be there and teach them how to survive and how to hunt in the wilderness. So he taught them how to hunt for deer and where to find lots of berries and herbs. He showed them how to plant corn. Uh, he had a special way that would make the, the soil richer and grow more healthier plants. They wanted to make friends, so they told them uh, the uh, Samoset and Squanto told the pilgrims about this Massasoit who was a wise leader of the uh, Native Americans and he came to visit and they all made friends and they signed an agreement they call it a treaty and they said we're going to live in peace and we're not going to harm each other and they said they kept that treaty for 54 years they all got along and helped each other and were friendly to each other and by fall, they had plenty to eat. They were so thankful. They had food and shelter and they had made new friends with the Native Americans. They decided to invite their new friends to a Thanksgiving feast. And so they said they would come and here came the Native Americans. It said, what a surprise. They brought 90, 90, Native American men with them and the pilgrims said oh, how are we going to feed so many people we didn't know so many would come has company come to your house and they were more than what you were expecting how are we going to feed them but the leader of the uh, Native Americans knew what to do they just went off into the forest and caught five more deer and then they had enough meat and food for everyone And then it said the oldest pilgrim gave the prayer of thanks and then the feast began. They ate turkey, lobster, goose, deer meat, onions, pumpkins, cornbread, and berries. They definitely had a big feast. The feast lasted for three days. They would eat and sleep and go eat again. They would play games, do dances. They just had a wonderful time together. So as the years went by, more people from England came to America and that little town of Plymouth got bigger and bigger. And the children grew up and they had children of their own and they had harvest feast and their Thanksgiving. And then in 1863, I know you heard of this president, Abraham Lincoln, he made Thanksgiving Day a national holiday. And so we don't ever want to forget that first Thanksgiving that we celebrate for so many years now. We have a reason to celebrate and to be thankful. So I hope all of you enjoy this time with your families. I just want to show you this book. This is the one I was talking about that's about Squanto and it's called In the Miracle of Thanksgiving. And this is a book for older uh, kiddos, but um, if the younger ones want to hear about it, maybe they have um, somebody, in, an adult around that will read it to them, or an older brother or sister or cousin that will read it to them. But it tells all about his life, and it is amazing. So you might want to check that out. 
And then before I leave, I have one more book that is a nonfiction. And we used this last year, but I went back through and it had some more good ideas and it had some things we have used in the library before. So this is Thanksgiving activities and it's all kinds of projects and games for kids. Last year, I think we did the Thanksgiving charades game and so that was a lot of fun but this time and miss elizabeth will fix this up so that you all can see all the directions but um they have a colorful corn bouquet and you can make this at home it tells you some of the things that you might need but miss elizabeth and i were talking sometimes you don't have all these things they list and you're so smart you can just think well what else could i use that's here at the house and you'll come up with something i'm sure and i'll show you these pages um, how they make their autumn corn and I noticed here, I think that's a neat idea if you have it, they turned a pencil upside down. Of course, you're going to have to use pencils you're not going to probably use again because they take the round part of the eraser and they blot into the different colored paints all those fall colors to make little dots for their autumn corn. Now, we, did, we made this at uh, story time a few years ago. And I brought a sample of what we did. We didn't use a pencil with an eraser. This is so crazy. We used our fingers. <laughs> we just got some paint and uh, we used all the fall colors, the oranges, reds, yellows, browns, and we just dipped our fingers into the paint and then made all these little dots to make ours look like autumn corn. And we just used plain white paper, so. And then if you wanted to dress it up a little bit, we cut, in, we didn't have any of the raffia, and so we just cut some green construction paper and made the little, um, I guess you would call it the leaf, the shucks sort of over the corn. And so we just glued it at the bottom and just made it like the corn. So you can see there. And I started thinking, you know, at my house, I might not be able to find all those colors of paint. And so what if you just had crayons and you just made little tiny circles in all those different colors? I think you could still just cut it out the shape of the corn cob and put your little colors to make it autumn corn. So we hope that maybe you'll decide to do this with maybe your brothers and sisters or little cousins that are coming to visit. Uh, when you have Thanksgiving at your house. You might want to do it a day or two ahead. And then, you know, your mom and dad may put up the autumn corn to decorate for your big dinner. Well, I have enjoyed today and uh, I am so grateful that we have Thanksgiving and a time to come with our family and just think about those things that we are appreciative of. And everybody has different answers when you say, what are you thankful for? everybody's going to have different answers but some of our answers might be the same too i know if i told what i was thankful for elizabeth might say oh me too and then she might say and another thing i'm thankful for and she'd tell me hers so maybe you can have that little conversation with your family around the table well i'm finished for today and we hope you will join us again for our next event and Miss Elizabeth is good at getting those things out to you and we hope that we can have some things in person pretty soon. We'll see you later.